Greetings of the day, everyone. I am privileged to welcome you all in the third edition of All India City Literature Festival, organized by SDR Knowledge Foundation in association with JH Raisoni University, powered by Raisoni Group of Institutions. I am Kanak Mahale, a poet and author of the novel Liar. I am delighted to be your anchor for today's session, a smashing time, words and humor in the Butterfinger series by Miss Karunisa Ma. Miss Karunisa A. is an award-winning writer of children's fiction who created the popular comic character Butterfingers and has authored the hilarious Butterfingers series of books. The latest, Smash It Butterfingers, a badminton-based novel, is a children of is the seventh in the series. Tongue in Cheek, the, the funny side of life, is her first book for adults. She has written two collections of delightful animal stories, The Wizard of Oz and Other Stories. And the, the crocodile who ate butter chicken for breakfast and other stories, and, and a short novel, Baby and Dub Dub. She is a full-time writer and lives in Tiruvannamalai. It's an honor to have you with us, ma'am. Also, before moving ahead, I would like to take a moment and acknowledge the support of Penguin Publication, as the association is extremely valuable to OCLF. Having said that, now I would let my audience enjoy the privilege of listening to Khairunisa, ma'am, today. I am humbly inviting ma'am to lead us ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kanak. Hello, everybody. It is a real pleasure to be here. Um, and I would like to thank the organizers for having invited me to be part of the Orange City Literature Festival. I have been a part of it before and um, I had a very good experience and it's not just the literature festival experience, but also right a uh, long time back in the past. I have been in Nagpur and that also has given me some very good experiences. So it's a um, it's a privilege. It's um, it's an honor for me to be here with you and Kanak, thank you very much for your very warm words of introduction. Nice to know that you are a poet and a writer yourself. Yeah, I hope someday I will be able to read your works too. <laughs> yes. So now um, coming to my books, this is a session about uh, Butterfingers because we look at the topic. It is um, uh, a smashing time. I'm hoping that you will have a smashing time and uh, the rest of the title is Sports and Humor in the Butterfingers series. So uh these are books um, i have written as kanak said my latest book that is um, smash it butterfingers this is the book it's the seventh in the series so so far there are seven butterfingers books as of now i have written seven butterfingers books and if you just take a quick look if i just tell you the titles you will get an idea of what they are about i mean a general idea now the first book, a novel, is How's at Butterfingers. Then it's followed by Gold Butterfingers. The third book is Clean Bold Butterfingers. The fourth is Misadventures of Butterfingers. The fifth is um, uh, Run It's Butterfingers. Again, I have to think of my own books, right? Um, the next one is, uh, of uh, yes, of course, uh, and then we have uh, Smash It. I don't know whether I got them all. Uh, How's that Butterfingers, Gold Butterfingers, Clean Bold Butterfingers, uh, Misadventures of Butterfingers, Run It's Butterfingers again, of course it's Butterfingers, and Smash It Butterfingers. So those of you who are familiar with sports, you know, How's That is the appeal when a batsman, um, a, when the bowler asks the umpire after hitting the a pad of the batsman with the ball asking him if he's out how's that he says so you have a title like that and uh, you surely will know you will guess it is a book about cricket there is cricket in it goal butterfingers goal i know you associate it with um, football hockey there are other games there are many games where you have goals but if you look at the title page you know it's a football book. it's a football based novel and then the third one, clean, bold butterfingers. It has got to be cricket again. And the next three, they are all misadventures of butterfingers. Run its butterfingers again. Look very colorful, don't they? <laughs> and of course, it's butterfingers. And then you have smash it butterfingers. So all of them um, tell you certain things. One is that 
clearly there are three or four books which are very openly about uh, sports, sports-based books. And the others also have some bit of sports coming in occasionally because the next three books are collections of short stories where I have again brought in cricket, there is swimming, there is fencing, there is karate, there is um, hockey. So a lot of sports keep, uh, you keep getting sports, I keep getting sports in. And look at the other part of the title, Butterfingers. Butterfingers, how's that Butterfingers? Gold Butterfingers, you know, we are not dropping Though Butterfingers keeps dropping things, we are not dropping Butterfingers from the title. He is there all the time. So he is what we call the eponymous hero. Eponymous hero is the hero whose name is also in the title. So here is Butterfingers, obviously a nickname. You can't, I can't imagine any parents, a parent naming the child Butterfingers. It has got to be a nickname. So here is uh, the, the, the title itself tells you Butterfingers, we know, is the nickname for anyone who drops things, who is clumsy. So you have titles where there is sports and there is a hero whose nickname is Butterfingers. Surely you can imagine that they will be humorous books. So for me, I'm trying to blend sports. Not all of them are completely about sports, but I'm blending sports with humor because if there is a butterfingers if there is somebody who is clumsy if there's somebody who is dropping things all the time if there is someone who is taking disaster with him wherever he goes surely there will be a lot of fun so that is what um, i try to do through my uh, books so briefly i will just tell you about uh, amar the hero of butterfingers that is the boy who is nicknamed Butterfingers. His real name is Amar Kishan. He's 13 years old. He is in um, class eight in a school. Uh, the name of the school is Green Park Higher Secondary School. And I have significantly enough, I have not given a city where the school is. People ask me, where is it? Where is the school? So I tell them I've deliberately not given a proper location because I want the school to be anywhere in India. It could be in Nagpur, it could be in Trivandrum, it could be in Chennai, it could be in Delhi, it could be in Calcutta. You just relate to what's happening in the school because it is dealing with what happens in school to school children, the incidents that bind them together and so on. So that is how, that is Amar, right? And a boy who, from the time he, it was his father who nicknamed him Butterfingers, all right? His father, because he was, uh, his parents were the long suffering, you know, the people who were the victims of his dropping things all the time. And because he was doing that, his father nicknamed him Butterfingers. And then everybody realized it's a perfect name for this boy because he's forever dropping things. You drop things, I'm sure, uh, Kanak. Uh, I drop things. Uh, we have, you know how it is. We all drop things. We are all clumsy. We all have a little bit of clumsiness in us. But in Amar, it is a little, uh, it's, a, it's a dominating feature of uh, his character that he is often, always, maybe not always, I mean, you have to give him some uh, break in between. Break is not the word to use with <laughs> reference to Amar because breaking is what he's doing all the time. But that is, you know, he, he is uh, in the thick of uh, things ca causing disaster and so on. So that is Amar. He is and a boy who is always like that. And he's a very happy-go-lucky chap. He loves sports. He loves um, the outdoors. He loves playing. He loves games. He's it's very intelligent, but he, he's not first in class, second in class, third in class. He's somewhere near the bottom because he believes that uh, only you need people, you need students at the bottom for others to be first, second, and third, all right? Very large hearted of him. And he has got his tall, thin, untidy, always, hair all over his place, shirt will never be inside, tucked in, and uh, shoes will have, uh, will be open in front, uh, often with the toe saying, hello, how are you? Uh, he doesn't care about all that. And uh, this tall, thin boy, his closest friend is a boy whose name is um, Kiran. Kiran is short and uh, plump, and um, he is nick. He has been nicknamed Tub because he looks like a tub, right? And Butterfingers, his friends keep uh, shortening his name. 
you know how it is when we have a long name you can't keep calling that name all the time you shorten it so butterfingers has become butter and then has become but all right but with only one t <laughs> and you have um, so together they are called but tub amar and uh, kiran they've got other friends too so i've created some um, quirky characters there is um, kishore kishore is a boy who loves the english language who loves books whose reading skills are way above his age you know way beyond his age he reads a lot it is through kishore that i channelize my love for literature <laughs> in the, because i love the literature i love english and so i take it i i have i'm so glad i created him through him i can talk about literature nobody will say if a 13 year old boy is quoting shakespeare i can't just introduce it like that but when i have introduced him as a boy who loves reading way beyond his age then nobody takes it as kids so i've created this boy who is so good in english his english teacher is scared of him right he's forever you know finding fault with other people's uh, use of the language and so on so that is kishore for you then there is this boy whose name is thomas thomas is uh, he asks questions all the time it's not always teachers who ask questions thomas asks questions all the time and he, uh, he any even if you ask him a question he replies with another question all right where are you going thomas he will not he will say why do you want to know and he's forever asking questions so he has been nicknamed question box or doubting thomas and we have another boy whose name is arjun arjun is they are all in the same class arjun is a um, lover of music he loves playing the guitar he's a little eccentric he wears his got long hair he wears one earring he doesn't care about how he dresses his head is full of tunes full of music all the time and in class he is always in his own world creating music so if you give him a book if you get anything in his hand becomes a guitar all right he just he strums it and he moves his head all the time and suddenly he gets back to earth and asks where am i what's happening so that is arjun for you this eccentric boy i mean all are not eccentric there are also other quite normal boys like jairam eric um, arun uh, and there is a girl you know minu a girl i wanted to introduce because i i had this idea of writing a book with cricket as the you know central interesting the sport that holds the book together i don't know why i placed it in a boy school and um having done that i have to carry it forward uh i'm sure girls will protest saying why did you do that we are also playing cricket <laughs> because it's a uh, uh, cricket it's cricket why did you put uh, you why did the milieu become a boy school well i really do not know why i did that but i did it and i'm trying hard to get more girls inside So into the school. So I've got Minu. Then in another book, I brought in a girl called Rishmi. There are um, teachers, you know, who are uh, female ladies. So I try to bring in some more some female presence, and uh, and I find that a lot of girls they don't have any problem. They don't ask me, you know, oh, why don't you bring more girls? They're happy reading these books where you have occasional girl walking in and out, um, and so on. so that is um, how th that is these people the students they are in class 8a and there is so you notice the create the the characters i have created are also the kind who will generate humor through whom i can generate humor through whom i can make things funny see i believe that children should laugh a lot life is very serious they are so stressed out i'm sure you'll agree like kanak <laughs> because you find um, they have so much from the time they are small once they go to school they are loaded with homework there's so much pressure on them so i always wonder what can i do to uh, ease that pressure how can i de-stress them in my way because i love humor and i like to write humor i thought this is one way in which i can contribute to their good cheer to make them laugh to uh, you know to get the stress out of them by just look of going forgetting themselves in the school where they are with the students laughing in in problems getting out of it and so so that's one reason and i really believe that humor has a very great role to play in the well-being not just of children but of everybody 
because that is what lightens our mood. That is what makes us look at life in a more balanced way. It is because humor is all about laughing uh, at about something. We are not mocking. There's a difference between mocking laughter and humorous uh, laughter. So we are often laughing at ourselves. I find a lot in me to laugh about. <laughs> so I have my, the book for adults that I have written tongue in cheek where I am the target mostly. You know, I'm laughing at myself most of the time. So that is how uh, that's what I think. And um, this is my uh, contribution to children's literature through that is making children feel happy through humor. And uh, so that is, um, and then I create these situations. So now let me just briefly hit and let me tell you that um, uh, the first book, which is How's at Butterfingers? Yes, this is the first book, How's at Butterfingers, which is important because any first book in a series is important because it is the one that starts off everything. So here is the book which introduces the characters. Here's the book which places them in particular surroundings which tells you about the school, which tells you about the teachers, which tells you about the kind of confrontations they can have and so on. But what I want to make you understand, it's not like Harry Potter's, you know, uh, the Philosopher's Stone or the uh, first book, which you need to read before you read the third book, second book, third book. You need to go in order. In my books, uh, what I do is every book is self-contained. So you can read this book, but at, at least, uh, I don't know, I am the kind who would like to read in order, so I would like to read the first book. Most people like to read the first book in a series. But if you pick up this book first, there's absolutely no harm in reading it. You will understand everything because I introduce the characters in every book in some way or the other. So you have, I'll just tell you how I have introduced uh, Amar in this uh, book see you look at the first this is the seventh book but this is how it starts race you to the milestone amar kishan through an impulsive challenge to kiran reddy his best buddy the 13 year old boys students of class 8a of green park high secondary school were walking home after school well walking is too elementary a word to describe their action packed journey action filled journey they jumped, fenced, charged, vaulted, smashed, dunked, scored complicated goals, and heaved imaginary sixes in a heady mixture of hyperactive perambulation. So in that one paragraph, I have told you about Amar, about Kiran, which class they are in, and the fact that they are really lively, have hyperactive children, and that they love sports because they are imagining, they are, they are dunking, they are heaving sixes, and so on. And very soon after that, I will also tell you that he's been nicknamed Butterfingers. Right? So that is how I have introduced him in this book. And the book before that, what happens is, again, I'm introducing him in the first when the book first starts, I'm not introducing him here in the first uh, page. It's, he's not on the first page at all. It starts with the principle. We believe in honoring the words of the dead. This book is titled The Historic Girls versus Boys Cricket Match. Now, don't think that it is a ghost story. Hmm? We believe in honoring what, the words of the dead. A. Mr. Jagmohan, principal of Green Park Higher Secondary School, gulped, goggled at the computer screen and read the message again. He pressed a hand to his head, urging it to make sense of the cryptic mail. What words? Who is dead? He wondered if he was delirious and heading towards a relapse. So he has been um, on leave and that's how he's catching up on the mail. But he doesn't understand this mail and he realizes that it's something to do with sports. So he wants to call. He wants the sports teacher to be called. And he opens the door, his, he doesn't find his pune anywhere, he's gone for lunch, and he thinks he will ask a student to bring the sports teacher to him. He opened his door, this is the second uh, page, he opened his door just in time to see Amar scuttle past. It wasn't the best of choices, but finding no one else in sight, he bellowed, Amar, come here. Amar stopped in his tracks, startled. Now what had he done? He's always in trouble, all right? Now what had he done? Nicknamed Butterfingers for his amazing ability to draft things, Amar Kishan was class 8A's prime architect of disaster. Well known for getting his class and himself into perpetual trouble. 
being summoned by the principal was a regular occurrence. Take that guilty look off your face, Ahmad, no matter what you might have done, Mr. Jagmohan continued his vocal impersonation of a bull. Go tell Mr. Sundarlal to drop everything and come here immediately. Drop everything, sir? Amar grinned on hearing his favorite word. I meant put everything else aside. Don't act silly. He gave him one of his withering glares. Tell him it's a matter of life and death. It's to do with a boys versus girls cricket match. The moment he uttered those words, Mr. Jagmohan wanted to bite his tongue because he knew now the news will spread like wildfire. So what I wanted to tell you is just that um, every book they get introduced. So you don't have to read the books in order, there is no chronolo chronological, there's a kind of a very mild chronological thread running through, you know, very faint, you could say. But otherwise, you can take any book. You can take this book and read it, a collection of short stories. You can take any other book and read it. It is fine. So now coming back to a uh, house at Butterfingers, you have, uh, I'll just briefly tell you, because it's the first book, I'll just tell you what exactly happens here. Now, in Amar school, um, it is, uh, they uh, the are, you look at the cover, it's obviously a Kulish book. <laughs> and the illustrations have been done by Abhijit Kini, wonderfully done. He really captures what I have in my head about Amar and what's happening. I really love the illustration. This one does not have uh, his illustrations except in the cover. In the novels, um, the smash it, we have every chapter having one illustration in the short story collections every story has uh, one illustration all right because we all love illustrations don't we i think even when we are uh, grown-ups older people when we uh, get a book and we find there are pictures we look at the pictures first i think there is something to do with how we grew up <laughs> we grew up looking at pictures pictures strike a chord we have never forgotten the fascination that we have for pictures so we love pictures and here, this is obviously a collision. So what's happened is that there is this man called Colonel Natkarni who is the, who lives very close to the school. Amar school does not have a playground. Now you'll be shocked. Imagine a school without a playground. A school without a teacher would be welcome. But imagine having a school without a playground. They do have a playground, but it doesn't belong to the school. It belongs to this man called Colonel Natkarni who says, who loves children. He's a bachelor, but he loves children. He loves cricket games. So he says, the children, you can play, uh, the school can use his grounds as the school grounds. And he's told them, don't worry at all. I have written in my will, he's about 76. He said, I have written in my will that when I die, these grounds will go to the school. So everything is fine, all right? It's practically their grounds. And Colonel Natkarni has initiated uh, he started a rolling trophy the previous year, which is the Colonel Natkarni Under 15 Inter School Limited Overs Cricket Trophy for a short name. And uh, the year before this book begins, Amar School, Green Park, lost the match, lost the trophy by one run. Who do you think was responsible? Amar. Last runs to get, last ball to be bowled, last, um, last uh, what is it? Uh, uh, over and the last ball of the over and everything last 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 you know how we have those like the world cup england versus new zealand match where we were sitting on the edge of us it watching what's going to happen what's going to happen everything last last and the ball was bold amar ran kiran was running from the other side kiran is not running kiran is more rolling you know that's how he uh, kind of his locomotion is like that and then amar drops his bat and when he dropped his bat, Amar goes, uh, went back to get the bat. Now, I don't know how um, well versed you are with um, cricket, Kanak, but and you children, many of you will be knowing that when you, you don't need the bat to complete the run. You just need to get into the crease. You need to get your foot into the crease. Amar knows that very well, but the tension of the moment got to him and he forgot and he went back to get the bat. And Kiran wasn't looking anywhere. Kiran was just rushing forward and bang, they collided. All right, one big collision. And Amar, very thin and light, he went flying. Amar's bat, he's got the bat and then the bat goes flying. Kiran's bat goes flying. But does Kiran go flying? 
No, why? Because gravity won't allow it. So Kiran just rolls off and falls to the side. And the other side, the fielders, looking very happy. We can get either of them out. They'll be run out and we will win the match, win the trophy. And they get Amar run out, all right? And so this is how the book begins. Now, this year, Amar is very unhappy. He has nightmares and his dear friends always remind him about this. They are not the caring ones who believe that uh, Amar must be dying a thousand deaths because he is responsible. But they keep reminding him. Why did we lose the match? Because this idiot cannot hold on to the bat. How did we lose the match? Because this, as Amar turned and came, ran back for the bat. So Amar is determined to see that this year they win the trophy. Right? That's one of the things that happens. And the other is that Colonel Natkarni passes away. So when Colonel Natkarni passes away, which everyone is very unhappy about, but then something else happens which takes their mind off the sorrow, which is that they can't find the will. The will in which he has said that he is going to gift the uh, grounds to the school is missing. It's not there. And if the will is not there, they lose the grounds to his heir, who is his nephew, who is a builder. This nephew wants to build a block of flats. Imagine in school, you look out of your school classroom and instead of the open grounds, you see blocks of flats. So everybody is very upset. Amar and his friends, they're all very well-knit group. They say, no, 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 we know there is a will because Colonel Uncle, they call him Colonel Uncle, he told us there is a will. And he will, he's, and they love him. And they are sure there is a will. But where is the will? So they start hunting for the will. So these are the two main events that uh, guide that take the story forward the few matches that are played before they come to the final and lots of other incidents funny incidents that happen you know, it's classroom at home um, mini disasters and so on and finally do they find the will you have to find out by reading the book and deciding do they find the will will they get their playground back and so on so that is how that butterfingers way. So that is why I wanted to tell you how, uh, and just read one little bit from here, which, um, uh, yes, where the, the girl comes. I told you that there is a girl in the book, in the school. She's a newcomer. I introduce her in this book. Her name is Mini. I'm sorry, Minu. So now, now Minu has come from France. She does not know anything about cricket. But she wants to learn. And these boys say, oh goodness, now how do we teach this girl cricket? She doesn't know one end of the bat from the other. But they are very well-meaning, nice boys. They might be getting into trouble, but basically they're very good-hearted. There's a lot of camaraderie. These are the things that I stress upon, you know? How children cooperate, how they help one another, how good-hearted they are, how well-meaning they are. Though all their well-meant uh, plans go awry and they land in trouble. That's another thing. So now she does, so they say, all right, Minu, you come, we will teach you cricket. So when they went to the grounds, Ajay, Ajay is the captain of the cricket team, all right? So this, Ajay said to Minu in the grounds, putting a bat in her hand, right? He puts a bat in her hand and he says, this is a bat. Now, earlier when they asked Minu, do you know cricket? Do you like cricket? She thought they were talking about crickets <laughs> because her father is a lepidopterist, not a man who is um, an expert on insects. So she thinks it is one of those chirping crickets. And then they tell her, no, this is a game. No game. All right, teach me the game. And now they tell her, this is a bat. Now Minu giggles. Ha, what a game. Crickets, bats. Is the whole animal kingdom involved? Sort of. Arjun, who was listening for a change, said with a lazy grin, we have some monkeys like Amar, Ajay and Kishore. We have overweight donkeys like Kiran and Eric. And a dodo like Arjun, Amar completed the list for him. He is living proof that the dodo is not extinct. Now Ajay continues his coaching. You hold the bat like this, he's telling Minu, and hit the ball that Thomas will bowl. He will begin his over, said Ajay. Now imagine getting all this information, one, you know, uh, at a 
when you're not prepared for anything like this. Out of the blue, he, he's, Minu is being told, you hold the bat like this and hit the ball that Thomas will bowl. He'll begin his over. Minu is totally puzzled. What's bowl and what's over? How can you begin something that is over? Asked Minu, holding the bat awkwardly and looking puzzled. So the exasperated boys realize they have a Herculean task on hand. And so that is how the book progresses. And that is uh, what you find happening in House at Fingers. Now in Gold Butterfingers, yeah, what you find is they are thinking of having a football. It's also a novel. Amar has this brilliant idea of having a football World Cup in school. How can you have a football World Cup in school? says we can because Amar is full of brilliant ideas. Every brilliant idea leads him and his friends to the principal's room. All right. <laughs> anyway, so he has this brilliant idea and he says we can have two, four classes taking on the names of football playing countries and we can have a tournament. That is one of the issues here uh, or one of the uh, uh, one plot. The other is they have a very stern English teacher whom they nickname Sourpuss because they feel she does not know how to smile. She looks like she's sucking on a lime. She is glaring at them all the time. She's scolding them all the time. And they say, oh, the Sourpuss, she's come to plague us. And they wonder who she is. Is she a witch? Is she a demon? Is she a, oh, what is she doing? She can't be a teacher. <laughs> she's got to be something else. Who is she? Why is she in their school? So that's another of the mysteries that are there, which is, and then there is a pesticide factory coming up. And of course, these boys want to help out. They do care about the environment. Pesticide factory means it's not good for the school. It's not good for the air. It's not good for the water. They're aware of all that. That factory must not come up. So they get, they put their, no, poke their noses there also. And then you have a lot of complications in this book. So that is this fun book, Gold Butterfingers. This one, I think the third one, Clean Gold Butterfingers, you'll really enjoy it because here what happens is, if you look at the cover, Amar is playing cricket with, a, with an umbrella. And here, Clean Gold is written on something that looks like a splash of red. What actually happens in this book is there is a thief who is stealing Cricket gear. I don't know what you have what you have to say about a thief who is stealing sports gear. Thieves have so many things to steal. This thief is very special. He wants to steal sports gear, bats, balls, pads, and so on from schools. And Amar's school also loses all the sporting gear. And they were going to have a match. What do you do? Should we cancel the match? Amar says no. Another brilliant idea. We'll have a match. We'll have a different a variation of cricket, he says. We won't, we will play cricket with equipment that's not with, uh, with no, without a cricket bat, without a cricket ball. So an umbrella can become a bat, a badminton racket can become a bat, a tennis racket can become a bat, your rolled up exam paper can become a bat. A walking stick can become a bat and a ball would be any kind of mm, would be anything that is round and uh, which you can hit and they make all kinds of balls and new rules so one uh so because there are new rules because it's totally new game uh one ball is called a super ball all right so Amar says one ball he's the one who comes up with these rules hmm? one ball is a super ball in only one over can be bowled by one bowler, only five overs and all kinds of things. Now the super over, he says, the super ball, he says, should be either a fruit or a vegetable. Either a fruit or a vegetable, which is not so hard that it, it lands on your forehead with a clonk and you pass out. It shouldn't be so soft that it falls on your face and becomes instant uh, tomato juice. It should be neither too hard nor too soft. The umpire will decide. So when you hit the ball, if it cracks, you are out, right? If it cracks. So that's why he names this game, not cricket, crack it. If you crack the ball, you're out. If you don't crack, it's a six. 
if you're able to hit the ball without cracking it, it's a six. So what happens is the whole school gets involved in this. And they are playing cricket all the time. They are playing when, when they are having lunch, uh, chili will become a bat. Uh, <laughs> so they are forever playing cricket uh, everywhere and the principal is going crazy. Now, finally, they do have, they have this match and I'll just read out a little bit from this place where they are uh, a little bit about cricket. There is Jairam. Jairam, this super ball, this is not a super ball, a uh, super ball thing is here, yes. So Ishan is the one who is uh, batting and you know what his bat is? It is a mosquito bat. You know the mosquito bat? <laughs> so now the super ball. And the crowd is waiting. They want a tomato. So they keep on, they are hoping for a tomato, but there are other vegetables and fruits being used. But now there is a tomato being bought. So the Super Bowl was indeed a tomato, much to the crowd's joy. And it began the tomato chant with gusto. All of them are saying tomato. <laughs> they are all in a kind of a chorus, in a kind of a rhythm. They are saying this. And Ishan got the vegetable in the center of the bat. But he managed to get the vegetable on his bat. And in the moment of impact, what did he do? He switched it on the bat. There was a swish, a crackle, a splutter, and some sparks. Roasted tomato announced Ishan proudly and showed it to the umpire. Mr. Sundarlal came to examine the bat and thoughtlessly put his finger on the still charged net. He immediately withdrew it with a jerk and a muttered oath. Shocking! He glared at Ishan, raised his abused finger to declare the batsman out. He removed the batteries, put them in his pocket before handing the bat back to the batsman. So that's what he does. And then you have this instance where Jairam is playing. This boy was playing with a mosquito, right? Now, Jairam is playing with a guitar, right? With a guitar, holding the guitar like this. See, he's, somebody's bowling. Milosh is bowling. Jairam, delighted to see a full toss coming his way, stretched his guitar to loft the ball, only to see it disappear into the sound hole with a thud. You know, the guitar has a sound hole. So the ball goes into the sound hole. No ball, declared the umpire. No ball, sir, said Jairam. That's what I said. Mr. Sundarlal sounded annoyed. No ball, sir. No ball. Ball is lost in the guitar. Exclaimed, explained Jairam, fishing inside the sound hole for it. The PT master was exasperated. He wondered for the hundredth time why he had agreed to umpire this crazy match. <laughs> right? So these are the things that keep happening. And then in these, these are all of them have short stories. Each story, each book starting with one novel about 60 to 65 pages. So in Misadventures of Butterfingers, what we have is ghosts at Green Park. Imagine ghosts at Green Park. What will happen if Amar's school has ghosts? You will see it's a crazy story where you also have Amar and his friends putting up a play. It is Shakespeare's uh, death anniversary. I wrote this in 2016. So 400 years since Shakespeare passed away. So Kishore says, let's have, let's write a play, which is a mix of several of Shakespeare's plays. And then one boy says, we must have Sherlock Holmes in. <laughs> so Shakespeare and Sherlock Holmes, okay, we'll bring him in, no problem. And they write a play which they call The Play is the Thing. The case of Hamlet. Case of is always with Sherlock Holmes, remember? So the case of Hamlet, Prince of Venice. So you have Hamlet, you have Macbeth, you have Merchant of Venice, and a lot of other plays. It's a totally crazy thing. And in the middle of all that, there are ghosts. Who are these ghosts? Are there ghosts? They managed to unravel that mystery. A lot of other um, humorous, funny stories. Ranit's Butterfingers, again, the novel is about karate. They are learning karate. Imagine Amar plus karate is equal to total disaster. And you have other um, stories. So then, of course, it's Butterfingers. I told you about it. It starts with a historic girls versus boys cricket match. Now, the latest book, that is, I think I must be having just about um, a little time left, right, Kanak? Five minutes? Well, you can continue because it's seriously very amazing. I'm just engrossed in whatever you're speaking. <laughs> so please go ahead. Okay, thank you. 
yeah so that is how it all happens and um, you have all kinds of see this of course it's butterfingers it's about a historic girls versus boys cricket match i told you i'm trying hard to get girls in so i'm getting um this is one way in which i got girls in one whole team <laughs> so there is a this colonel nutkarni before he passed away he seems to have wanted a cricket match on 15th march now immediately this was why 15th march what is special about 15th march why not some other date and why does he want us to play against girls but they they any time they want to play cricket any game they are game for it so that's no problem for them but they also must find out they're very inquiring minds they have and they play and they go crazy it's it's a crazy funny uh, story you'll enjoy it the next one is a story called mummy <laughs> which mummy not your mummy but the egyptian mummy so there's a mummy coming to uh, uh, an actual mummy that is coming to the museum in, in their town and the school is going to take these students there so his father so amar tells his father his parents at home that it will be here for a few days then it moves to other places before going back to kolkata and then from there to florence a traveling mummy his father laughed don't forget that all mummies come with a curse not your mummy he added in a hurry when his wife glared at him <laughs> yes dad curses awesome kishor was talking about the curse of the pharaohs what's it exactly it's the curse that falls upon anyone who disturbs an ancient mummy especially the mummy of a pharaoh pharaohs were extremely powerful anyway it was mostly pharaohs who became mummies only they could afford it the others ended up as mere dead daddies <laughs> ha 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 amar gafford almost falling off his chair mrs kishan rolled her eyes at her husband and then they go on and amar goes to see this mummy and then they he lands in a terrible uh, very strange adventure so you have that music makers in a spot of bother so i do introduce a lot of other different different topics and the occasional you know sports is also there it is just mere it's a lot of amusement and a lot of now coming to this book smash it butterfingers this is a badminton based book so after three collections of short stories i went back to a novel and i thought badminton actually i first wanted to write a tennis novel but then i realized no i didn't really yeah, i thought tennis is an elite sport i want amar and his friends to play sports that anyone can play the middle class in a school no it should not be something which only very rich uh, kids can play so i thought badminton and also india is doing so well in badminton now and we need to celebrate that so let's have badminton and earlier i had only the title all right i wanted to write a book on badminton and my title was smash it my editor was very happy and then i was stuck with the title <laughs> i didn't have a book and then i had to think and um, plot bring a you know think about a plot also so what this story is about this book is about is there is this um, multi millionaire called brijesh kesi who is eccentric my books have quite a few eccentric characters walking in and out he doesn't like superstitions he believes that there is too much superstition around and he also believes that children should stop you should catch them young when children are small they should be taught through books that it is ridiculous to believe in superstitions and irrational things right so he says one way in which he wants them to get rid of this idea that uh, some things are unlucky some things are lucky is he says there should be a cricket match on friday the 13th right friday the 13th between amar school which is the thir 13th school in the list of schools in that town another school called clover school which is the 13th school in the list in another town so he says we will have this match has to happen and 13 year olds have to play amar class 13 now oh, very good that was one nice way in which i was able to get amar's class to play this and the boys who are 14 the boys who are 12 were very annoyed you know, that they are left out of it only amar's 13 year old Uh, friends are able to play this um, it's i'm sorry it's not cricket it's badminton he is arranging for a badminton tournament between amar school and clover double stop so that is uh, happening and uh, what does amar go and do he trips over uh, his father's badminton racket at home and breaks his hand 
right hand. But Amar is one who never takes no for an answer. If the right hand is gone, there is the left. So he tells everyone, I'm deft with my left. I can play badminton with my left. And he tries to practice and he wants to somehow play, right? And uh, they are, they're practicing. Now, these boys are wonderful at cricket, wonderful at football, superb at basketball, and zeros at badminton. <laughs> they are hopeless. They are, the, Mr. Sundarlal tears his hair. He doesn't have much hair, but what little he has, he tears. And he says, what nonsense, these boys, what is this? You can't. He tries to make them mm, to see who he has to fix, who is going to play. Nobody seems to be playing. And then, very unexpectedly, Arjun, the eccentric boy, who lives in his own world. He says, I can play. He says, you can play. He said, yes, I can play. And actually he can play. His father has been making him, forcing him to go and get some exercise and he's been going and practicing and he's very good. And Amar with his left hand is better than the others with their right and both hands. <laughs> so that is how these two are going to play. Now, Amar has an idea that um, he thinks we have to show Mr. Brijesh uh, well, I don't think I will tell you more about these complications. Right? You have to read and find out. But let me tell you that there is a black cat that comes into their classroom. A black cat. Suddenly, out of the blue, a black cat. And she seems to have adopted their school as her um, home, temporary home. Walks in and out, a very arrogant cat puts her nose in the air, totally black, walks in and out as she pleases, and they give her the name Ozymandias. You yeah, must have heard, I don't know how many of you are familiar with um, Shelley's um, sonnet, Ozymandias, where it is. Yeah, sad. we had that. Yeah. We had that chapter. You had that, ne? yeah. It's one of those, <laughs> these the boys had to study that. And therefore, they thought Ozymandias is a nice name for this arrogant cat. <laughs> so they give her the name Ozymandias. So one day it comes into their classroom. So I'll just wait a little bit and after that I will stop. So she comes into the classroom and um, she's forever um, at loggerheads with the dog. There's a dog whose name is Chuha. Chuha, right? <laughs> and he's a mongrel. He, he, is, he is scared of the cat. <laughs> so it's the cat that is chasing the dog. And she comes into the room. Chuha also comes. Chuha runs away and Ozymandias chases him, then comes back. Look at the picture of Ozymandias, arrogant cat walking. <laughs> and so they are discussing the cat. She's got green eyes and watches us as if she knows everything about us. Black cats mean bad luck. Kishore snorted. Ha, now don't you start with that. No superstitions, please. Anyway, it's fitting that we should have a black cat in our school just when we are getting ready for a match on Friday the 13th. Ozymandias has been crossing and recrossing all our paths as she did now. Nobody is bothered any longer that a black cat brings bad luck. Oops, exclaimed Amar. What was happening? The salt packet, you know, they were eating mangoes with salt. And the salt packet had just reached Amar and his hand being, you know, still in a cast, he drops it. He drops the salt. So somebody said, Rishmi, the other girl, excellent. Now we have salt drop too. We have a black cat. Now you're dropping salt because it's supposed to be bad luck. More bad luck. Amar laughed. Uh, Kiran laughed. Not to worry. You can neutralize it by tossing some of the spilled salt over your left shoulder. You know, for every superstition, <laughs> you can counter it by doing something. So he says, you can do that. My mother does it. He took the whole packet from the floor and flicked its contents over Amar's left shoulder. Now Ozymandias ran into the class and in the salt's path, getting the white shower bang on her back. The students' guffaws greeted a scared Chuha who had mustered enough courage to chase the cat. He gave a howl and bolted, now pursued by a spotted Ozymandias. So that is how that happens. And then uh, Jeram says, now all we need is for someone to break a mirror. That's also bad luck. And invite the seven-year curse or see magpies or walk under a ladder. I shattered the glass of a framed painting at home on Saturday. Amar volunteered. <laughs> Not good enough. Jairam shook his head in mock solemnity. It's got to be a proper mirror. A one-year curse maybe for your broken glass. And don't forget that nail clippings thrown on the floor are bad luck too. Nail clippings? Why? Thomas asked. 
because witches brewed their magic potions with the nail clippings of their victims in order to control them. Nitin ex explained before Kishore had a chance. Kishore is the one who, is, who wants to explain everything to everybody. Kishore added, but did you know that Pablo Picasso actually believed this and kept all his nail clippings in sealed containers? Crazy. I do that too, man. Arjun drawled. <laughs> he had been silent all this while steadily munching mangoes. Only I don't clip them. No way. I bite them off. More fun, what? And store them like that dude Kishore mentioned. You know, he's talking about Pablo Picasso, right? Like that dude Kishore mentioned. I collect my hair too when I trim it. I have my nail box with me. You never know when you will bite your nails. He, he, he. Wanna see it? Now, where is it? He begins to, he began to dig into his pockets, but Minu stopped him with a shudder. No, thanks. Yuck, how gross. And then that is how that story. So, this is, these are the fun books. And I just wanted to tell you that uh, reading these books will give you a lot of pleasure. You will get this uh, school atmosphere. Now, Thanks to COVID, you're not able to go to school. I mean, many children now, schools are opening up, but we really don't know because the threat of COVID hasn't completely gone. So for a long time, it's been sitting at home, online classes and school life. See, I'm talking about them having lunch together. Great fun. I'm talking about them in the grounds, playing cricket, getting into scrapes, being, being called to the principal's room being punished there. So, so many things that are so, and then the classroom atmosphere is there. So you have a wealth of little, little uh, details about the school, school life, which you are probably missing a lot now and which you can vicariously enjoy, vicariously meaning second in a second hand manner through this book, through these books, you can go back to school life. You can enjoy school life. And also, one thing about books is, and what is happening to you, is that in books, you're not there. You empathize. You're with the character. But then you're happy that you're not in all those scripts. That actually makes you enjoy the book better. Oh, thank goodness I'm not the one who is involved in all this. I'm not the one who fell down and broke my hand. I'm not the one that the principal has banned from playing the World Cup match. You know, all those things. So you empathize, you enjoy it, and feel a sense of relief. Okay, thank goodness, I'm not the one. <laughs> so that is how uh, books really uh, add so much to your life. They are, uh, there's nothing like books. So for me, it um, uh, one of the reasons, if uh, people do ask me, what do you like better, writing or reading? And I will always say reading. I may be writing. But for me, reading is the most important. Reading is what has always given me joy, always given me pleasure. If you ask me now, you know, what would you want to read? Why don't you write a story? Or there's a book around? I'll take the book. It's not that it is a, it is an easier option. It, it is <laughs> because you just need to read. But reading also makes demands on you. It's not like watching television. Reading means you have to get absorbed in it. You have to understand what's happening. You have to imagine what's happening. You know, there are so many, it's making so many demands, diverse demands on you. And your brain is actually, while doing all that, your brain is getting to be better. We don't know that. So reading is helping us in so many ways. But the main reason why you're reading is because you want to enjoy a good book. So that's what, that is the beauty of the whole thing. You're doing something, you're enjoying something. And while you're enjoying, look, at the advantages look at the immense benefits that are there your language improves your ideas come to your head you become more level-headed you are uh, you know you might even stop uh, uh, being superstitious <laughs> so so many things uh, advantages are there so many joys you know? so there's nothing like reading and now that i'm also writing for me that again the joy of writing is manifested it, it gets complete uh, the reading, writing process is complete only when I have readers. And it's not just the reluctant reader. It's not a reluctant reader. If I make a reluctant reader, an earnest reader, or an enthusiastic reader, for me, that is the best gift. 
and about six people have told me that they have become readers after starting on Butterfingers. So that is something that I cherish. But when somebody reads and gets back to me saying they like the book, they love the book, why they liked it, then it is, uh, it makes my whole, the exercise of writing, it's a joy, it's not an exercise, it's not, like, it's not a painful thing, I enjoy doing it, it completes it. So that is how it is, but reading, but you must, but reading is always my first love. And those of you children who want to write, let me tell you that you can become good writers only if you are good readers. Writing can only happen on a foundation of reading, right? So I would uh, like to thank um, Kanak. Thank you very much for listening. So, uh, you know, it was so nice uh, to have you there and all you dear children, parents, all my, all the listeners, all who are watching, uh, thank you very much for giving me this time and uh, getting introduced to Butterfingers. If you were not introduced earlier, if you were already introduced, then there is a new book, so which you ought to enjoy because I really enjoyed it. And I worked so hard over this book. So for that, at least please read it because it's badminton. Not that I don't know the game, but knowing the game, playing it here and there, I'm not a professional player and writing a book very difficult the two different things i needed to do a lot of research i watched so many badminton matches i wanted to get all my facts right i did all that i think so because a badminton player whose name is rajiv ose former england number one and 2017 european badminton singles champion he said that he didn't find any mistake i was so relieved you know, that uh he... because you have worked so hard on it <laughs> yeah Kanak, i really worked hard i have to say that you know because um i and really respect your hard work <laughs> yeah thank you so much because you really have to you know you can't uh, uh, be casual about these things anything that you do uh, some people think that because you're writing for children, but these are for older children and uh, adults. Kanak, you'll also enjoy it. Because uh, Shashita wrote, he just loves the books. He's the one who's been releasing all the books. So he says, uh, what did he say? Kairuni said, her entertaining best. <laughs> so uh, anyway, there's a big uh, quote from him inside. So uh, grown-ups also like uh, these uh, Butterfingers um, stories. But what I'm saying is people have this feeling that children's uh, literature uh, they take it rather casually but for every book even and i have great respect for those who write for very small children it's very difficult i don't think i can write that you know it needs different skills to write something that captures the attention of smaller children see yeah three i years. agree no you agree right it's very difficult yes. people take those writers for granted that's not fair mm. no? you, you should give them credit for understanding what the child wants and giving that to the child so at every point i think what um, one needs to do is to understand the hard work that goes into the book you're only getting the finished product you're getting the book how many people are involved in this whole process it's not just me i'm there my illustrator is there we started off but after that so many people there are teams who are there my publishers penguin random house they are my publishers i am so grateful to them for their backing of the book they are very happy with the way the book is uh, books are doing the series so that also makes me feel good all these things these are the encouraging things of uh, writing otherwise it is a very arduous uh, process you know, to write anyway I would like to thank um, Orange City Festival organizers, Kanak especially. Thank you and each and every one of you. Thank you so much for having me uh, on this, uh, uh, for this festival and letting me spend some time. Thank you and wish you all the best. Please enjoy reading always. <laughs> yeah, ma'am. When we have writers like you, we obviously enjoy reading. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. So that was really nice, Kanak. So I think it's over, right? Yeah. Yeah. So bye. I, I may have overshot the time. I really don't know because I I thought it was a 40 no, minutes. No, ma'am, you didn't. You didn't. No, I didn't. You're being very generous. You're really sweet, Kanak. 
thank you <laughs> so i think it's point. because yeah ha huh? no 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 what it's because it's because you are sweet <laughs> <laughs> that is no strange. actually um, we feel comfortable when we have such people and so generous because you are so humble <laughs> 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 so thank you ganak but what i was asking was um, what kind yeah. of poems do you write actually i write hindi poems and hindi. i write novels uh, i write novels in english uh, in english okay yeah. how many have you written uh currently i'm working on one and one is published its name okay. is liar and liar. Um, you, yeah you said that yeah yeah and uh-huh. a poetry collection uh, it's a series basically kanak ki yeah. kavitaein Okay. And uh, yeah, so the first one is published, and second mm-hmm. one is uh, expecting to be published in January or February. That's wonderful. So young and doing so much. You know, I started writing very late, quite by accident. Some other time, I'll tell you how that happened. Because okay. <laughs> I was so busy teaching in a college, but my love was English literature, and then I switched to that. But uh, yeah, this liar is it? Uh, what kind of a novel is it? Is it a uh, It's a rom-com novella. Okay. <laughs> All right. That sounds uh, yeah. interesting. So probably the boy is a liar. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. it's it's actually a kind of a novel which you will relate at some or the other phase. But huh. um, but the name suggests that somebody is a traitor. But actually, there's no one who no. is uh, trying to harm or trying to cheat. the other one it's misunderstanding is it yeah a kind of <laughs> uh, okay sounds very intriguing <laughs> yeah <laughs> so when you, you have a, huh you have when you have a clash of opinions uh. then sometimes it happens so the same is with agastya and netra these are uh. protagonists of the story okay uh. and uh. they struggle to uh, maintain the kind of rapport which they build up in the initial phase Mm. Uh, so they continue to, and what happens at the end? It's a suspense. <laughs> oh, okay, don't tell me. <laughs> Let me see if I can get it. <laughs> so is it a very thick book, or how many pages? Sure. It's a one thirty pages book. That's uh, that's not very long. So that will yeah. be good. Yeah, it's yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah. So who published it? A Notion Press publication. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and the next one that you're writing. Oh, sorry, ma'am. What are you writing? Uh, the uh, the next uh, uh, poetry collection is coming out. You said no. Yeah, January and February. Yeah. Expected to yeah. be. What is your? What are you doing otherwise? I am an engineering student. Ah. In second year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And already done all this. Very good, Kanak. Yeah. Yeah. Thank I you. I wish you a very bright future. You no, know, where you do several. Thank you, ma'am. Like <laughs> this really means a lot for me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kanak. Really, so happy to meet you. Yeah, so the best. <laughs> Same here, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Bye. So do keep in touch, Kanak. My uh, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, you have my mail ID, I think, and then you can send me a mail, and later we'll share numbers. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye, ma'am. <laughs> As we are approaching the end of the session, I would like to thank Ms. Ferronessa A for joining us today. We wish we get to hear you again and be equally enlightened as we all are today. And for my dear massive audience, I'm sure that after witnessing this wonderful conversation, you all are taking home an enriched version of yourself, just as I will. Thank you for joining us today. Until I see you again, I'm Kanak Mahale signing off. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Horizon, a vision beyond.